this is my, my normal Bible. This is an NIV version. And I really need to get back into doing regular Bible reading videos. But let's dip in. We're going to be reading from the New Testament this, um, in this video. Mostly focusing on the words of Jesus. No matter what you think about him, whether you believe he is a messiah or a son of God, whether you believe he died for our sins and rose again, you can't deny that he had some powerful things to say while he was alive. And we've got a record of some of the things that he said. And I think some of the things he said um, really tie into what we're experiencing in the world today. Racism isn't a new concept. It was a uh, Racism was a, a thing back in biblical times. And there was particular animosity between the Jews and the Samaritans to the point where it was dangerous for a Samaritan to um, interact with Jews and it was dangerous for Jews to interact with Samaritans. So with that in mind, I thought it was particularly pertinent to um, start with this passage, the parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to Jesus, or stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? And how often do we see people trying to justify themselves? at the moment. In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him. Sorry, I'm bumping the, the phone. I'm trying not. I'm trying not to have such a wobbly camera today because it's been a bit of an issue. Right. he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Next I want to read from, so that was from Luke. Chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. 
7. Next we're going to turn to Matthew and we're going to look at some of the Sermon on the Mount. said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbour and hate your enemies. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and on the streets to be honoured by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. you pray, do not be like 
receive their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, will you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what shall we drink, and what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not judge, or you too will be judged, for in the same way as you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred, do not throw your pearls to swine, throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet, and then turn and tear you to pieces. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who 
hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hear, hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash.
all this will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets and stone those sent to, to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you are not willing. Look, your house has left you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until, until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I'm not reading from 1 
1st John. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so you will not sin, but if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defence. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know him, if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is a message you have heard, yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light, and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded him. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This, then, is how we know that we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask, because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them, and this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Thank you for joining me today as I read a few scripture verses. you know 
your spirit you would challenge us and prompt us I pray that we would not do our actions in big, big public displays of self-seeking interest Lord God so often social media is the modern day equivalent of what the Pharisees were like in Jesus' time Lord God I pray that we would love would be in action and in truth and not just in words. Lord God, I pray that you would prompt us to take action in the, in the secret places, whether it's in the voting, the ballot box, or in our, in our charitable donations, or in whichever way you prompt us. Lord God, I pray that we would examine our own hearts and if there's any anything that doesn't reflect your love that we would bring it to you Lord God we would seek your forgiveness and that we would strive to do better Lord God I pray you'd show us give us eyes that would see those around us who are in need the hungry, the thirsty those in, those sick and those in prison, the naked and the stranger. Lord God, would we see those people in our society the most vulnerable? Lord God, would we acknowledge our own privilege and blessing, and would we share it with those who are less fortunate? Lord God, would we be part of the process that tears down privilege? And injustices in our society. And would we model the love that you displayed, even to the point of giving yourself up for us? Would we be willing to give up our creature comforts for those who are less fortunate? To get out of our comfort zones? and your mercy upon mankind at this time. Lord God, I pray for your healing. 